Welcome to the Backpacking Blisters podcast. With me today is the legendary host of an epic show called the Adventure Sports Podcast, a show filled with interviews from crazy adventurers and big outdoor industry names. Please welcome Mason Gravely. How's it going, man? Oh, uh, Carl, going really well. Thank you so much for having me. It's a it's a pleasure to be on this side of the mic. Uh, it's a treat. It's a treat not to have to, you know, do the, all the research and just kind of like <laughs> show up and be talked to. I'm, I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah, you're like my typical co-host. He just kind of shows up and he's like, yeah, what's, what are we talking about today? Wait, what's, what's the show about? <laughs> there's some beef there. There's a little bit of beef. All right. Oh, yeah, of now. course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, hey, I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of your show. I've oh man, I don't know how long I've been listening for 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 years for sure. And uh, usually, I'm, it's, I listen when I'm actually out on the uh, you know out on the trail doing whatever trail running or hiking or something. So yeah, t- can you tell us about for those that have never I don't know how they haven't, but if they haven't heard of the Adventure Sports Podcast, like what is the show about? We, you know, I I, I often uh, think. What is our show about? What do we do? <laughs> what is the adventure? Because people read that word, that phrase, adventure sports podcast differently. Like, is it adventure sports podcast or adventure sports podcast? Right. Uh, you know, they're not exactly sure. And I'd say it's evolved over time, too. But really, what kind of gets me going and gets me fired up is how people use adventure sports as a medium to mm-hmm. have life-changing adventures. It's right. not about the sport. We don't talk about a lot of gear. We don't talk about, yeah, reviews of gear or right. d- dive into different, you know, technologies coming out with that or really into a lot of the planning or how to. It's, hey, you went and hiked the Appalachian Trail or backpacked the PCT or, you know, sailed around the world tell us some stories about that experience how did it change you so really it's the adventure stories podcast and that's almost like the um the name i use sometimes just as like its nickname it's it's really it's the same acronym or the same you know yeah acronym asp uh, but it's the adventure stories podcast was really about stories and the medium to have those stories is adventure sports whatever that sport is right and and it's not i mean you hit I feel like every possible topic with adventure from like ice skating for, you know, hundreds of miles down rivers in Alaska to Mm -hmm. hiking across Australia with camels. Like you, I mean, every possible type of adventure, I I feel like somehow you're able to find it. So is, I mean, are are you just trying to like trying to up your game every single time? Like what else is there out there that people are doing? So, so you have those big buckets, uh, through hiking, backpacking, those things that don't require a tons of specialized skills. Right. Uh, just, you know, everybody can, obviously, you know, backpackers are going to, ha- you know, not like that comment, but you know what I'm saying? Compared to big wall climbing or right. something very, very unique where there's not a lot of guidebooks for, not a lot of information on the internet for. Um, so you have those big buckets, backpacking, bike packing, mm-hmm. uh, my mind's blanking, just running all, all sorts of just, major sports right we definitely stretch that word sport a lot on this show <laughs> like you, you said camels uh hiking with camels across australia i don't know if that's an actual sport but uh no but there it's were some amazing stories in that so right yeah i i really enjoy the quirky adventures so i i would almost put quirky in our description somewhere of, <laughs> i really enjoy the folks something about people that don't care how it looks on the outside and what the uh, you know folks around them think and just go for it mm-hmm. i love those kinds of stories so if i find a story about someone who's unicycling around the world <laughs> right. or one guy i was just talking about yesterday who paraglides like he's got a, a a paraglider okay and he basically backpacks through through hikes uh with a paraglider so oh my goodness just imagine instead of you know, hiking 20 miles a day, he is gliding or flying 50, 80, 100 miles a day and travels, you know, across countries that way. Right. Uh, just like a bird. It, it, it's unbelievable. I've never heard of anybody doing that. He'll travel thousands of miles from mountaintop to mountaintop to mountaintop um, uh, with, yeah. with, a, with a wing, not yeah. with 
uh, not with a backpack or not on his feet. And he'll, he'll still have to hike hundreds of miles because you got to climb somewhere to jump off. Right. Um, but it, it, it's just like so many cool things like that. So we don't get one downside about that is uh, from an audience point of view, folks don't have the chance to dive really deep into any sport. It's really just people who enjoy feeling that sense of adventure and hearing stories about adventure. Like just recently we revisited one of our episodes of a uh, surviving a plane crash in like, okay. gosh, it was the middle of Idaho or Montana yep. out in the woods and, and that story. So it's really, that's not a sport. That's not really even, you know, in a, you know, a journey that someone went on purposefully, but it's a heck of a story. And so yeah. that, that's the kind of stuff I like to talk about. Yeah. The stories, the adventures, all that stuff. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, and that's what's inspired me over the years for sure. So like I was, you know, I, like I watched a documentary series back in the late nineties on the eco challenge and, and just watching that, like you're not getting oh, yeah. into the nitty gritty with the gear. It's just, it's pure story. And that was enough to yeah. get me into like, you know, basically the multi-sport adventures just from watching that show. So that's, we've had the Macy's on the show. If you know, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Travis Macy. Son. Tra yep. Travis Macy. Oh yeah. His dad. And, uh, few others in that world so yep that's yep. a yeah that's definitely kind of our crowd for sure for sure so all right so i gotta ask because some of the adventures and the people that you have on the show like they're there to make to inspire you and to make something seem achievable maybe not exactly what they're doing but something in that realm seem achievable but then you have others that are on the show and we've had these types of guests on our show as well where it's very hard to relate to them because they live a life that for the most part, people aren't going to live, right? They're not, you know, mm -hmm. we're not all sponsored athletes. We have family obligations. We can't go training for 12 hours a day. We can't leave our jobs for six months at a time. Have you had any kind of thoughts around that? Like the relatability to some of these adventures, like it's really cool what they're doing, but really like it's for them and not for everybody, so to speak. Mm. Yeah, that's actually something I'm always thinking about and kind of in my mind, and it's not this linear mm -hmm. in reality because everybody's, you know, kind of all over the spectrum. There's probably another axis here that I'm just not thinking of. But the way I'm always thinking about the show is balancing um, relatability and inspiration. Mm. Um, obviously, someone can be inspiring and relatable, right. but... I'm, I'm using inspiration almost as a, in an unrelatable way. You know, Alex Honnold, who free soloed El Capitan in, in Yosemite, huge documentary about it called Free Solo. Right. Is that inspiring? Uh, absolutely. Is that relatable for <laughs> almost nobody on planet Earth? Right. I'm, I will I will interview him. Yes, I'd absolutely tell that story. However, sure. I'm going to balance that out with stories about people who hold down full-time jobs and also do really cool things in their free time. Right. And personally, I get a lot of inspiration and also a lot of hope from people like that, <laughs> right. um, where it's like, how do you have a fulfilling, wonderful life and, and have to do, you know, basically handle life's responsibilities. It's, it's through finding someone inspiring like that. So I find myself more nervous and more excited and more uh just i anticipate those people who i find personally inspiring who hardly anyone knows or reads right. or have a very small following just because i look up to them due to their relatability whereas right. i've talked to plenty of you know world-renowned athletes and um huge people with huge i mean a-list celebrities i've had on the show and there's just not an ounce of nervousness or, or anything mm -hmm. just because it's almost like, Hey, if this guy go, doesn't go well, there's, you know, our circles are so different. It doesn't really matter. Right. 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 Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's funny. It's funny. So it gives me a kind of a sense of, of calmness with, with folks, uh, and with people that are, you know, just your everyday adventure. I, I'm almost more nervous to talk to and more excited really is what yeah, it is. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm always thinking about that balance and making sure we're striking a balance. That's very, yeah, that's very cool to hear that. I know. And it's funny that you mentioned Alex Honnold cause that's like, like not even talking about what he did on El Capitan, but just look at his, his lifestyle, right? Living out of a van in Yosemite for, you know, half the year. Like yeah. some people can do that, but most of us, you know, that 
probably most of us that are listening to the show, like that's not a possibility. Maybe, maybe when yeah. we're in our, you know, late fifties or sixties or whatever. Yeah. But, I, we talk about those windows a lot. You know, yeah. we, on our show, we try to break down uh, misconceptions about what it means to be adventurous mm-hmm. and what adventure is. Okay. Um, so we talk a lot about uh, having adventures in places that you don't typically have adventures and having adventures in times of life that people don't think is very adventurous. You know, a lot of right. people feel like they have two windows for, for really big, big adventures. And that's, you know, early twenties or mid twenties, <laughs> that kind of time in college and after college before kids or before marriage and whatnot, right. and then at retirement. But what we see a lot of is so many of our guests, and, and this is what I like to talk about, really take advantage of those transition times in life, whether mm-hmm. you're laid off due to COVID. There was a huge surge with our show. A lot of stories early on, because we started in 2015, um, were from the economic crash of 2008. So many people ended up doing the AT because they got, right. you know, they got fired at their Wall Street job. And they're like, you know what, this is the time. Mm-hmm. Or they just changed their life due to that. Yeah. Uh, and there's a surge of stories, surge of books being written, surge of just attention on doing things different. Well, the same was true with, uh, you know, any tragedy. Uh, 9-11, we had a lot of stories, you know, early, early on from from that experience. I know we just had mm-hmm. an anniversary of that. Right. Um, and then most recently, COVID. Uh, yeah. We're going to get basically five years worth of stories out of the influence <laughs> COVID had. And of course, sure. people you know, or having plenty of stuff outside of these huge, you know, events. But those seem to be times that people in that time of life that's less uh, uh, flexibility, all of a sudden, without notice, have that flexibility. Yeah, and there's right. plenty that take advantage of it. So for sure, we get a lot of stories from those situations. Yeah. And that's really what our, our podcast is about, too, is kind of highlighting some of these stories we can have on our on the shorter adventures and yeah, we just got back from, um, yeah, probably one of my life's, I would say, biggest adventure that was not necessarily, you know, these kind of month after month uh, type thing, but more of a like a short term adventure that was just, you know, kind of your life's like one of your one of your stories you tell, I guess. That's yeah, okay. that, and that can happen during the time you have kids, obviously, as well. So int- I, li- I like how you balance it. All right. So now what, what was your big adventure? Can't okay, well, I can tie it back to me hanging that like that. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm trying to like incentivize you to have me on your show. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well I'll, the first thing I'll ask you is, well, what's your adventure? What's the adventure? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I forgot. I got somebody who's curious on my show. Uh, right. <laughs> most you, people are like, I don't care. Let's get to the content. When uh, I have podcasters on the show, I have to f- basically wrestle them in an audio, f- like wrestle them to not interview me. I know. My show. I do that too. Yeah, it's it's a habit, but you're right. you know that's that's what makes a great host. Curiosity. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So yeah, our adventure. We haven't fully told the story yet because we we kind of had the build up, and I've got a reference to that actually in this episode with one of the guests we had on. But um, but we kind of tying it back to Alex Honnold. He actually went for a trail running assembly last year that was um well, part of our big backpacking loop. It's kind of part of our our podcast story called Red Peak Pass. And it's basically this 50 mile loop. And so he's like, oh, I just did this, this, this run. I just went on this today. It took me like 13 hours, you know, cause he's like this super stud athlete and that's yeah. been a backpacking loop for us. And so we were wanting to set the fastest known time on it. And so the story oh, wow. goes back to 2020 where we where I had to pull out due to injury. My two other buddies went anyway, and it ended in a search and rescue um, phone wow. call. And so it took three years to get back there, but this was the year where we kind of made our second attempt. And that was just about a month ago. So that's no our way. story. We, we got, yeah, we kind of, we kind of made a production out of it. We got, you know, we got, we have like a filmmaker who kind of joined us for the first 10 miles or so. And so we're going to make it into a documentary and, and hopefully do an episode about it, but we haven't revealed kind of how that went down, but there's definitely, I don't know if you were tracking with all the snow and the rain that the oh, Sierras got last yeah, winter. But I was, I was backpacking in the Sierra right as the first snow the heavy snow has fallen okay. actually in that valley just below red peak pass mount star king you know I the know. area no oh, way the that's amazing well. i that's was amazing. back in there last fall for okay a week. and it was <sighs> mid-october and it that's late it, it was getting cold yeah. at night and i'm from florida so yeah, you know it doesn't cold. take much right but we were right there at the base of red star uh red peak and yeah. uh 
yeah man that's yeah. so funny i just ended up deciding to me and a friend go up that valley okay and we got pushed down due to snow and started going that's around crazy. to the north side of the valley right. and then coming down but anyway that's that so snow, cool that snow that's, was that's still small there world. It was, yeah it is small world so that's so, that snow was still there and was covering the trail and um Gosh. and we had people that yeah there weren't a lot of people on the trail when we went but the people that were there were like you may want something more than like road running shoes fyi as we're making our attempt so anyway wow. um that's thanks for asking that's we'll cool get, man so F yeah. fkts man we talk a lot about that we had the right. we've had the, the good friend of the show is the king of fkts jason hardrath okay um in my, my day job at athletic brewing we ended up making kind of the documentary of fastest known times oh, um, okay. during COVID last year, we released a documentary called journey to 100. And it was about the FKT leader, Jason, who was a guest of my show and, and was uh, one of our ambassadors at athletic brewing. Okay. Um, his journey to a hundred fastest known times. Okay. And uh, it was just an awesome documentary. We took yeah, it on I the check road. Out. Okay. Please do. Yeah, we took it on the road. We sold it to Outside uh, Magazine, their streaming platform. And yeah, uh, where are you? Are you in Colorado? Yeah, I'm in Colorado. Yeah, we took it on tour right through town. I'm, I don't know how I missed that was, one. I don't know, there, man. It there was. was awesome. I'll, I'll be honest. That during that three years of where I was like kind of down and out with injuries. I was not listening to show podcasts at all because oh, I, like I listen when I'm out on the trail, when I can't get on the trail, I was just, you know, wallowing in my own misery basically. So, uh, yeah, yeah so I got some catching up to do for sure. Oh no, man. Yeah. Well, uh, that's uh he's got a lot of, a lot of his, uh, FKTs are in Yosemite. Okay. Different oh yes. Things, and, but... and full, yeah. So he'll probably end up destroying ours, but uh, <laughs> just don't our, tell our, him. <laughs> our appeal, well, it's, it's gonna, it's about to be published on the site. So our appeal is, um, not that we're going to get 100 FKTs. We're just your average Joe's trying to get one. And I love yeah. That. And then, it, and it, you know, once it gets posted, it gets shattered is kind of how it works with us. But anyway, all right, we got to get into this, man. We got, okay, peace. Okay. So what did I, I, I titled this legendary advice from the world's greatest adventures. You've talked to a lot more than we have. We, we haven't always been like an interview based show and we kind of switched to that about a year ago. And so I have fewer to pull from, so I'm, I'm feeling a little bit inadequate out the gate because I have a feeling that some of the people you're going to be referencing are going to dwarf mine, but I'm going to try anyway. I got some good stuff here. So do you want me to go first? Or you want to go first? You go first. Okay. All right. So let's start off with, I'll start easy because this is a guy I, I'm pretty, I think you just had him on the show not too long ago. Ryan Van Duzer. Yeah. Ryan okay. Duzer TV. Duzer TV. Yep. That's right. So so we had him on the show, I think it was back in February, and I follow his YouTube channel, and I just think he's just like a ray of sunshine into people's lives. He's just so positive and upbeat and just just the kind of person you want to be around all the time. And so, yeah, we were really blessed to have him on the show. And so one thing, so one, I don't know if this is advice, but this is something he does that I've seen in multiple videos that I've actually like just kind of taken up myself. And so he's so positive. He starts his day after he's, you know, slept out on the trail from like a bike packing trip. And he's, he's filming himself do this. He's like, uh, like, thank you ground. Thank you for providing a place to sleep last night. Thank you tree for providing the shade and protecting me from the rain. Thank you bike for taking me this many miles. He's just like these super cheesy, like, like, thank you, this, thank you that. And it's just like this, like, I am not, somebody who thinks that there's, you know, some sort of spirit in the ground or in the tree that I'm physically thanking. I just mm -hmm. think it's a super funny and fun way, kind of just like a, I don't know, a way to kind of loosen things up and just build morale out the gate at, from the day while you're out on the trail. And so, so that's my first one. <laughs> I love that. Um, okay. So I got a question. So, so here's my question, my follow-up question. Is there any silly things that you do when you're out on an adventure to, to kind of keep morale high, something along the, maybe not that, but something along those lines. Oh gosh. Yeah. To keep morale high, I'd say right. snacks are the best thing <laughs> to keep morale best. high. <laughs> right. Is just having something to eat, man. That's, I've been on plenty of trips, adventures, especially early on that I, I didn't really know what I was doing mm -hmm. and I'd run out of food and there's nothing that there's nothing that has burned into my mind more than, to never run out of food again. And <laughs> I, I really feel for people where that right. is, you know, sadly not a guarantee in their life. It's just Fair like, enough. oh, it's PTSD almost. And and so when I'm, when I, even I go for like 
a little hike with my family. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking, you know, a little hike. Like I'm, a I'm quarter mile. like PB and J's and yeah, yeah, yeah. grilled cheeses and snack. And I'm like, there's a whole bag dedicated to food. <laughs> my wife thinks it's absolute overkill. And I'm like, babe, I never want to be in that position. That's and so I, I hate it. So anyway, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's one thing that it's a little, probably a little overkill for me. No, it's well, we had, a, I mean, we never ran out of food ever until our last trip we took with the, with all the guys, we were up in uh, Banff, Canada and there was eight guys there and five guys ran out of food on day three of four. And we were, we just weren't planning the, you know, I guess the level of difficulty. And so, so we now know what it's like. <laughs> We're probably never going to make that mistake again, but, um, all right. It's so, good for you. You know, it, there's yeah. a lot that's, you know, to, to limit or just to, to lack and to put yourself in that position. You know, that people talk about fasting and whatnot and right, it's, right, right. there are benefits to it, but you know, I'm okay not knowing those benefits in my life. I'll, <laughs> I'll do other things to get benefits. You know, <laughs> but food enough. is not one of them. That's so funny. All right. So Ryan Van Duzer was, uh, was number one on my list. All right. So what do you got? So legendary advice from one of the people you've talked to, what you got? Number one. So thinking about this question, I had a hard time nailing it down to one person. We've had almost a thousand interviews and there's are so thousand, many that's crazy man and there's and i you know i wasn't the original host it was another host but i right. took over and i listened to gosh i'll edit probably every episode now for, twice because i have to you know edit them you know, right. you, know how it is. you you listen to it when you record it, and you listen again when you edit correct you let's do it when you edit like five times so <laughs> it really sinks in um but what I kept going back to were themes. Mm -hmm. There's a very common theme when you talk to these people living this way and viewing the world this way. And one of the most important and I think most common that I try to remember, especially when it doesn't feel this way every day in, nor in quote, normal life is the world is not as bad as it seems. Mm. Um, so many people that do adventures, that's the first thing they say okay. is, what did you learn on this trip, uh, traveling the world or backpacking any amount of trails or doing any, even something in the middle of nowhere where they don't interact with a lot of people. And it is, the world is really full of wonderful people eager to help. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter where you are, no matter what your political beliefs are, no matter what you look like, no matter, no matter any, no matter what, people have the same general response of, hey, here's a person in need, how can I help? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we can find millions of videos on YouTube or do any sort of Google searching to find evidence of the opposite. Right. But I think those are so popular, those instances, because they are the exceptions to the rule. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that, you know, when someone isn't kind to someone else, whether it be a shopping mall, parking lot or whatever, right? it's because it's basically proving the rule. 99.99% right. of people want to do good and want to help you. And it gives a sense of uh, unity to the world. I, and I think that's one of the best lessons I've learned hosting. Okay. I've learned it myself on adventures, but I also relearn it every time I talk to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, yeah, for sure. And I've had, I've had to lean on some people out, you know, outside doing adventures and stuff and definitely been fortunate to, to kind of meet some different folks that you would never normally meet as a result of that. And yeah. And that's actually straight, like that actually connects with my guy, Ryan Van Duzer, because that's a big part of his channel is that people yeah. will come do adventures inspired by his interaction saying, Oh yeah. Like what you're just saying, the world is not as bad. Like these people are just nice people that live out in the boondocks or whatever. So Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have to. I have to admit though, I thought your first person you're gonna drop is Bear Grylls because uh, that was <laughs> that was one of my favorite interviews you did. Was uh, you had Bear Grylls on? I was like, how do I get that guy on my show? And yeah, yeah he just said he just said no. Basically, he's like, yeah, I don't have time for you. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> he didn't say that. His his production team did. So it was uh, that getting Bear Grylls on the show was, and I'm not. You know, I don't. I say this you know, knowing that I don't really believe it was a miracle, but it was a miracle. Okay. It was, 
I, one day I was in New York City. One day. And mm. I only go there maybe once a year uh, okay. for work. And my because I said I, I work for a brewery. That's my day job. Right. Have you ever heard of athletic brewing? I uh, yeah, because because your show. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And uh, you know that's uh, I don't know how people think. I just if that's what I do in there during the day and nights and weekends. And it is nighttime right now. I do the podcast, so that's right. that's how it is. Uh, I was up there and I had to go from New York to Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and that drive, you know. It's not that long of a drive, but I had to do it. I had a one interview one day, another thing for work the next day. And I got an email days before saying, hey, Bear wants to be on one podcast on his press tour. Pick <laughs> this podcast, which is a miracle in itself. Right, like, right. Pick this show. Do you happen to be anywhere near New York City? Oh, my goodness. And that like, is a miracle. No, but, I yeah. don't. I live in Florida. And right. that's a lot closer than the UK, but it's still not very close. Right. I said, and you won't believe it, but I have a free afternoon and I'm mm. going to probably be driving through the city right, right about when he'll be there. And so they said, meet us at this hotel right next mm. to Central Park at this time and we'll right. be there. I showed up. His agent was there. I walked up to the room. There's Bear Grylls chilling. Oh my gosh. And, yeah. uh, chilling. <laughs> Okay. And we sat down and recorded and it was absolutely amazing because, you know, out of the probably 500 episodes I've done, I've done less than 10 in person. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, right. they're a treat. They're an absolute yeah. treat. I try to do it. I've done I do them in here with there's a guest that happens to be in this area, which yeah. happens every now and then. Right. But that was one of them. So okay. it really worked out. Really. Then it was on again a few weeks later. Uh mm-hmm which was more, more like this, a virtual interview. Gotcha. Okay. But well, that is cool. Yeah. So I sorry, guess I've man. got I'll, 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 into story time. No, I'll try to work <laughs> in on like how I can randomly be in New York the same time bear is. And so that, that sounds kind of stalkerish. So maybe not. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't have any, I didn't ask him about stalkers. Maybe he's cool with it. I don't think he would. Be, <laughs> maybe he's but, cool uh, with that. Yeah. No. Not, um, okay. That's cool. I, I did not know the backstory in that. So that's interesting. I, it, we we just reach out to everybody, so we're not afraid to, you know, you never know who's going to say yes or how that's going to work, but okay. Oh, yeah. All right, my number two, mm-hmm. this goes back to the story I was telling about going to Yosemite. We Before our, our adventure, we had on a guy named Jeff Peltier, who's a YouTuber. He's like an ultra runner, fast packer. I'm not sure if you're familiar with his stuff. If Pretty much if you type in like fast packing into YouTube, like his stuff comes up. Yeah. Super nice guy, super knowledgeable. And so like the whole purpose of the episode was I was running my ideas by him for how to go ultra light, how to essentially lose some gear weight for my trip because I just wanted to not crash and burn. And so mm. he was, so his response to me was there's going lightweight and then there's going stupid light. And mm. so he was calling my ideas stupid light. He's like, what you're doing is like, you're just, you're put, it's too risky. Like you're putting yourself too much at risk. And so it really made me think, okay, like his inspiration was, well, what, what am I doing that really is stupid and stupid light? And what am I doing? That's like kind of worth taking the risk on. And it kind of brings up this question. Like he inspired this question, like when does taking safety precautions go too far? Like, where's the line there? So, so I'll throw that at you. What, like, how would you interpret that? How do you know? You know, you, you could pack for redundancy for everything and your pack could be 60 pounds or you could go stupid light and you don't have enough stuff. You don't have enough food, for example. So where's where's the line? I, I think the line is what you're trying to get out of it. Um, there's people I've talked to who purposefully go out less prepared to try to test themselves mm-hmm. and they want to get close to that line of stupidity and you know, I, I, I'm of the opinion that's what you want to do with your life. You can do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you, as long as you're not putting people at da- in danger and right. unnecessarily using resources like search and rescue that would have to rescue you if you're, you know, you're putting yourself too close to that line where it's, right. there's a good chance you're going to need those services. I'd say don't, you know, don't be selfish in that way. But personally, 
there's, it all depends. It all depends. Am I doing this alone? Am I doing this with a friend? Am I doing this with a newbie? Mm -hmm. I think, I think there's so many variables there and it depends on what you're going for. Uh, I don't like being, I don't like being ultra prepared personally. Okay. Uh, just because one, maybe that's just an excuse to not train as hard (laughs) Um, and like do the research Two, I see a lot of people that maybe over prepare Mm -hmm. and it goes well and nothing really happens or goes wrong, which is great. And if that's what you want, great, but they typically don't have a lot of stories either. Right. And I'm always balancing. It's like those college days go for the story. I'm always kind of <laughs> going for the story. There's actually a rule in our house that my wife more or less despises. It is, you know, at some point, this is going to be a story. This is going to be a right. great story. At some right. point, I what I kind of say, I, I actually, that's not the phrase. I'm not like remembering it right. It's been a while since I've said it, apparently. But it says at one at some point, this will be a sentence. Mm. Yeah, we moved here one time or yeah, we did this one time or yeah. All this stress, all this, all this is boiled down to a sentence or two and it'll be past you. But, but what's, you know, that's one way to look at it. Like at some point this will all, this trial will be a sentence or you can also say at some point this is all, be you know, it's going to be a great story. Right. And it sucks. Uh, we were, we we're making a film with athletic brewing and things did not a documentary and things did not go to plan for one of our athletes. Okay. And it sucks for them. It really does. I hate it for them and their journey with what they were training for. I won't give too much away, but I look over at the film crew and I'm like, and they're capturing the moment. The athlete is just bawling their eyes out. It's just extremely emotional. It's really heartbreaking. Right. But I look over at them. I'm like, this is going to be awesome for the film. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be such a good story. Yeah, you, they, were okay. like, they were like this, like, yeah, it's going to be is great. Good. This is good. So I, I'd okay. say that balance of not being stupid, but also yeah, what can go wrong? Is it going to make a good story? Will you be right. alive to tell the story? That's what I'm always aiming for. I think, I think we're cut from the same cloth in that regard because I am hyper like, aware of that. And even on our adventure when we're, when we're filming it, I told my buddy, I said, look, if I'm like, you know, writhing on the side of the trail, cramping up, like if you can help me, help me. If not, like you got to turn the camera on. <laughs> you got to film any sort of yeah trials or tribulations because that's part of the story. Yeah. And the line in our house is like, I just, my line is like, hey, talk to my wife. Hey, I know you're mad right now, but not too long from now, you're going to think this is really funny. And so, um, so we had like, I don't, we got a dog a few years ago and my son was young. And so he's, you know, responsible for picking up the dog poop when he does and he puts it in a bag and then he chucks the bag over the back fence into the neighbor's yard. Oh my and so God. it took, it was a quite a few bags before the neighbor realized this. And so the neighbor came over super mad about it and we're, you know, so we're apologetic and we like end up baking him cookies. And my wife is so embarrassed and I'm like, but you wait. Like a year from now, this is gonna be a funny story. And sure enough, oh, it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. you're it's, right. Yeah. It'll be a funny it, that, that stuff. I mean, you're gonna tell that till you know the day you die. You'll be right, telling exactly that to your, it's to their kids and grandkids. Like you'll never believe what they did. Exactly. Yeah, that's so. awesome. All right, that's so that was cool. my second one. I had so I got Ryan, I got Jeff. All right, any anybody come to mind? Number two or any other thoughts? What you got? Yeah, another thing is another theme. And I can tie it specifically to someone here, and that is to Alistair Humphreys. He is one of my biggest inspirations early on. I found his book uh, about his four-year bicycle vagabonding experience around the world back in college. And he uh, he, like had a terrible breakup, didn't know what to do, and just said, you know what? I got like $10,000 and a bike. I'm leaving my parents' house at the age of, I don't even know, 22, 23 and leaving for four years, biking around the world. Well, anyway, he, he's kind of has a career now and what he's really known for is the concept of micro adventures. Mm -hmm. Cause he's like, he gets back from this trip and and he's, and he's like, what can I do to top a four year adventure? I can't (laughs) do this forever. Right. You know, climbing Everest or any of these typical big adventures, especially for someone in the UK where Everest just seems like something 
every adventurer does. He's right. like, I don't just think that's going to do it. What can I do as I progress in life and do some of those things he, he wanted for himself, like having kids and, 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 and meeting somebody and settling down. Well, he came up with this concept of micro adventures and started testing it out. Like what if instead of driving to work every day into town, what if I walked one day, what would mm, that be like? Right. And he realized that those little things out of the norm scratch that itch mm -hmm. way more than he realized they would. Right. And, and you and it's funny because you can be someone in your vehicle seeing someone walking on the side of the road thinking they're having an awful time or, you know, why are they doing that? How? But the person doing it, there's so many layers to what you're experiencing. The, the, it's like being on trail. You see mm -hmm. and see so much more, experience so much more. And that concept of micro adventures, he wrote a book about, he, be, he became pretty famous for it. He was selected as a National Geographic Adventure of the Year mm -hmm. for that. And that's a mindset I have heavily prescribed to in recent okay. years. And something I really talk about a lot on the show is because I've done like six month long adventures and, right. and I just can't do that anymore. I've got two young kids and um, that's well, that's been a whole adventure the whole time they've been Indeed. alive, really. <laughs> but it's like I, I'm not going to be doing these multi month experiences for any for the foreseeable future. But I also don't want to mm -hmm. uh, just because I would. I just couldn't do it. You know, I couldn't know that they needed me and I'm away. Right. Anyway, how do I scratch that itch? And and really it is taking advantages of my weekends and those small moments in time off. And I'm very surprised by even for someone who has had those experiences that are, you know, some of the longest adventures we talk about on these trips. I know what that's like. It does it for me. It really does. Like in right. a way that, I didn't think that it would. And that's, mm. I find encouraging to a lot of people. Yeah. So that was a really long answer. No, no, no. I was, I'm, I'm in, I love the micro adventures. I mean, I even view my training, my training sessions that way. If I'm just going for a run or just trying to get back in shape or whatever, like I just, I just soak all that in. So I'm, I'm with you on that one. And I think it does. Yeah. What she said, scratch the itch for sure. So that's mm. interesting. Um, I did. It's funny. You mentioned that too. This week I was thinking, like, what if, speaking of like walking to work, like what if I ditched the car for a year and like had to ride my bike to work or something? Mm -hmm. And, you know, like how that works, especially with the snow going on or anyway. So I, I always kind of wonder about that kind of stuff. But I know. think it I think it teaches you more than you think. And, and, and even like one of the go to examples of a micro adventure is just go camp on like in your backyard or on the mm -hmm. back porch. And you don't think that's going to do much for you, but you you will never forget the night that you camped in the backyard. Mm -hmm. You will absolutely forget the 5,000th night you slept in your <laughs> right. bed. Nothing right. to set that apart. I sleep in my hammock sometimes in, in between two trees in the backyard and my mm -hmm. dog's usually underneath me. And I'm blown away by the amount of things going on wildlife wise at night right. in my yard. And I'm like, right. there's all this happening while I'm asleep. Jeez. Yeah. Kind of keeps you awake. So you don't you sleep trap that camera. Great. <laughs> yeah, I know. but it's, uh, I'll, I don't forget any of those nights Yeah, because they're so different and so unique from my normal life. So I okay. really encourage folks to just think, doesn't take flying to, you know, the Himalayas to have an adventure. Mm -hmm. It really just takes doing things slightly differently. Correct. Yeah. That's well said. Well said. Yeah. All right. Uh, my last one, we've referenced her ever since we had her on our show. Are you familiar with Brooke Whipple? Girl in the Woods, YouTuber. She's been on Alone a couple times. Uh, name sounds familiar. Okay. Yeah, she's, she's one of our um, favorite guests we've ever had on, and she was on earlier this year as well. And so she, the reason why she's amazing is because she, I think she's, I don't know, a few years older than me. Her kids are a few years older, but she's a mom, she's a wife, she's, and she's, I mean, from what I gather, a very good mom, a very good wife, and she is just doing the bushcraft thing well and heavily inspiring others to do the same thing. And she freely admits, she's like, look, when I started this, or even right now, I'm not an expert in what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. I'm just making it happen. And so her kind of mantra is like, you can do it too. Like, you don't need to have as you kind of mentioned all your ducks in a row, you don't need to be, be perfectly planned. Just simply do it. Just get out there and do it. And if you mess it up the first time, you're going to learn from it and you're going to get better. And so 
I don't have any like survival skills. I, that's kind of skills I want to learn when I have more time, but just her inspiration, just watching her just like kind of figure it out as she goes. She's not an expert with all that stuff, but she's making it happen to me. That's like supremely inspiring. Wow. That's awesome. That's yeah. uh it takes a little courage for someone, you know, that people are looking up to, to admit that too. Oh yeah. Um, just like, Hey, I don't want to know what I'm doing. So, yeah. you know, just so you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I, she does, she knows she's, she's like, yeah, she's just that, but she, she's trying to like come across as like, I'm just a regular person. There's nothing special about me. There's no, you know, wow. I'm just, I'm just a, an every woman, so to speak. I love that. Yeah. That's so, really cool. Do you have any desire to, to learn any bushcraft or survival skills? I mean, you just have survivalists on your show, right? Yes. Yes, I have. Funny enough, I just, the like, most recent guest, this is more, you know, not true bushcraft, but one of the contestants from Naked and Afraid right, I talked right. to, just like, hey, what was that like? And right. they were like, yeah, I had to learn a lot of this bushcraft stuff beforehand. Like I trained and, and, and actually a lot of the adventures before the show took place uh, from due to training, like actually mm. being out there alone training for this show. And Right. That was really interesting. And so they were, they, they learned a lot of that. The guests did. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, you know, I just had the founder of Cotopaxi on the show, Davis Smith. Mm -hmm. And I love that company. I'm a huge fan of that company. Uh, I love what their, mm. their values and the colors of their gear and all that. I'm, I'm a big fan. And um, he does an annual island survival trip where he just goes to an island sometimes with friends sometimes alone and mm -hmm. survives for okay. a set amount of time like off the land and figures it out it's really wow. cool uh that's just yeah. almost his way of resetting and there's plenty of benefits from from that and learnings and yeah i love that but uh yes as far as just pure bushcraft and survival i feel like i'm adequate i, I like i feel like i could if i needed to but i'm not like all gung-ho about learning those skills well could uh, you go to the island could you join and be like i'm gonna hold my own i'll go set up shop over here oh yeah definitely okay. i could definitely do that um, right, what, what if it was the jurassic park island with dinosaurs <laughs> uh hard to know <laughs> hard. i don't know i i would be yeah i, I think i'd have less chance of survival okay especially those fences like yeah the yeah. electrical wires didn't work anymore which they always I, need to i yeah. deal with a lot of gators in florida that's true uh, <laughs> and those are dinosaurs a hundred percent you look at a gator and it's yeah. like i am looking at a dinosaur like mm. there is there's no difference it is 100 percent an ancient creature and yeah. uh yeah they're pretty skittish you know i'm not too i paddleboard everywhere you know gator infest i was going through this thing called the deep hole which is basically it looks like the serengeti with crocodiles mm -hmm. it is it is wild and i went right through the middle in my paddleboard and there's literally a hundred alligators and mm. they're just not i don't know you get used to them so i don't, I don't know if that would be the <laughs> I don't think so. I'm not getting, that's not for me <laughs> one, no, it one knocked me off the board it's okay like, they'll slap me and i fell in and, and you're uh, like oh you and then you climb oh, back on you. swamp puppies is <laughs> oh the name gosh. they call them around here and yeah no they're, it's freaky i'm not gonna lie i'm not like yeah. oh it's fine but it's kind of like uh you you it's a lesson. This is a sub lesson is talking to adventurers. There's, there's the dangers that are perceived by the outside. And there's mm -hmm. the dangers that you know are true from the inside. Right. A great example is um, I do a lot of bike packing and people are like, Oh, aren't you worried about animals? And aren't you worried about this or that? And I'm like, no, uh, you know, what I'm worried about is those giant, rentable rvs that mm -hmm. families get in the pool yeah. you know then drive through the same places i'm biking through right. national parks beautiful you know scenic highways and they they're they, they drive a prius most of the time but right now this week <laughs> one week a year they've got this you know 25 foot basically white box of death that mm -hmm. they rented don't know how to drive that's what's that's the true yeah. statistical danger right and so it's just like anything else. People who are familiar know what those actual dangers are. So, gotcha. Uh, you know, gators are just one of those. That's definitely one of those misconceptions. Kind of like sharks. You know, people mm -hmm. who are very familiar with sharks know it's no more dangerous than a lot of other fish in the sea. So, 
That they being said, I actually, I actually strangely know somebody who got killed by a shark. So we, it, we live, it does happen, but it's so rare and the chances are so slim. But when we were living in Australia, somebody at our church who I actually knew personally, um, who's a surfer, like legit got killed by a shark. So was, yeah, while we were there. Sucks. Yeah, Holy it does. Cow. It does. But I know what you're saying statistically hundred percent. So, um, okay. All right. So I, I, I got my three in Yeah, Yeah. One more on you. All right. So it's another one that's more like just inspired from by the of the person in kind of the way they go about we mentioned alex honnold earlier yep and i've never had him on the show funny enough um i'll talk to him i'll I'll try to get him on your show i'll I'll put in a word for you have you had him on no i I have like a back (laughs) channel way of getting a hold of him possibly but um but i think he's in pretty high demand at this point still Yes. Well, I've had his mom on a handful of times, a few times, okay. uh, Deirdre Woolenick. And uh, I'm not going to lie. She's a she's awesome. She's a lot of fun. And you get a sense of where he got his ways <laughs> from her. But she's right. very different than him. She's almost uh, she's into a lot of different things and okay. kind of her interests vary. And also he has a sister that a lot of people don't. She She doesn't do any media, but. I've been trying to get her on for years because Deirdre would love for her to tell her story because she doesn't get the spotlight. I believe she's a teacher and is also into bike touring, like cross country bike rides. That's like her thing. Right. Um, and I don't know. I, I've really enjoyed getting to know Deirdre. She's a fan of the podcast. Now we talk all the time and uh, her, her interest in so many things is really what fascinates me mm-hmm. and kind of you as a parent, I'm really interested in how she went about raising who became, you know, one of the greatest climbers of all time. Mm. And, you know, she wait, 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 you don't, you, okay. You're interested, but would you, would you want that for your kids? Like, I want you to have no fear as you're climbing up a cliff face. That's, you know, a thousand feet up. It's very clear. She's extremely proud of him. Okay. And I think as a parent, yeah, I don't want that. I, I kind of get now why my mom didn't want me doing half the things I do. But if <laughs> right. it was up to her, I'd be no, not up to her. Probably grandparents. It would be up to just if it was up to them, I'd be hiding under my covers all the time. You right. Know? Nothing sure. could happen to me. And that's right. not going to lead anywhere good. So even though my mom, I remember one time I got back from this, I, I, I biked from Alaska to Florida mm-hmm. and I biked home. Uh, to my house, my mom's house. And the next day I'm like, all right, mom, I'm, you know, I'm going to go to dad's house. They're divorced, but they only live a couple miles apart. And I'm like, I'm going to, you know, bike to dad's house today and go see him uh, just to, you know, catch up. I haven't seen him in a couple months. And right, right. she's like, you can't bike down that road. It's dangerous. <laughs> and I'm like, right. mom, I just rode here from Alaska, 500 <laughs> miles away on the same road <laughs> and she was like oh, like the mom logic kicked in yeah said, that's that's dangerous and right. i'm like mom, how do you think i got here right. and also you think that's the most dangerous road i've been on in the last two months and so right at the same time so so learning from her you can tell she's proud of him mm-hmm. uh, of alex and he i think kind of was inspired not i don't think she ever really like said hey you need to focus on this it just was natural he loved climbing and she supported that but her interests were all over the place she was handling being a single mom uh, a widow Mm -hmm. taking care of all that stuff her father passed away taking care of his estate and all the homes and uh, that he had and getting them ready to sell and raising two young kids taking care of dogs and animals and she thought the town they needed they lived in needed an orchestra <laughs> uh, and so she started one, a nonprofit that's still going to this day. She wanted to publish a book, but no one would. So she started her own pub- publishing company that she ran for years. She just she go get her. She goes after yeah. it, and it, to the point that it's like, wow, how do you do this? And I, 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 I think her son has that, but it's more focused on one thing, probably forever. Right. Um, and. I really am inspired by her ability to just tackle a problem, face a problem, and also 
doing that, being a present parent, I think is just going to have a positive effect on her kids. And you, but you can tell she's equally proud of both because mm-hmm. uh, they're both passionate about what they do. One just happens to garner more, more attention. Right. So I don't know exactly what the lesson is there. I just find her really inspiring. Yeah. Well, I mean, the curiosity, the the go getterness. I mean, just the fact that you've got a podcast, you got to be somewhat of a go getter. You're you're going and getting different guests all the time, so that, that's part of the deal. But yeah. yeah, in terms of yeah, having like I'm trying to inspire and venture with my kids. We're going on as many adventures, micro adventures, whatever as we can. That being said, I don't ever want to have have them, you know, have this lack of fear to the point where they're, you know, they're just gonna die young. Like it's just they're, they're taking. Yeah. Like, I guess calculated risks, but they're still like the risks are, I don't know, they're significant. I wouldn't want my kid being Alex Honnold on that, on that cliff, essentially. No, I, I don't either. I, yeah. I think she, she didn't seem, she, yeah, I don't know, all that fearful yeah. about it. I don't know. Right. It was right. interesting. Right. But yeah, I wouldn't, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, I, I think we have a pretty good chance that they won't be. Just, you know, there's <laughs> yeah, fair decent, enough. It's almost like saying, I really hope my kid doesn't win the lottery because yeah. that brings just way more problems than it's worth. Well, yeah, that's another, that's like, another oh, story. That's pretty, pretty good chance they're not going to. So. Fair point. <laughs> fair point. All right. Well, speaking of all this adventuring and uh, the, the, these famous folks here, we've got famous adventurer, famous adventurer trivia coming up right after this. All right, so Mason, I got famous adventurer trivia for you. So you got to get two out of three to pass, and if you fail, you get you know one or none correct. Here's my punishment for you. You've got to record a quick promo, like after we're done here, suggesting that my trivia questions are good and fair so that I can play that promo on a future episode for my uh, typical co-host, Derek, who always complains about my trivia. Do you agree to, do you agree to those terms? <laughs> I agree. Okay, I agree. and then if you get two or more right, you get two or three right. What do you What do you want from me? All right. So my <laughs> the I should I should do something like that to actually help the show. But I I like to be funny and uh, a little bit. This is just too too I much fun hear. to pass up. Is I, I want it. you on your next backpacking trip, especially. It's got to have other people there. At least oh one yeah, always person. always where. For at least for one mile, and okay. you got to post this not the whole one mile, but right, right, evidence wearing your underwear on the outside of your pants for one mile, okay, of your next backpacking trip. All right, done. And don't explain it to people, just do it. You just can explain after, you can explain right. after. People are like, What are you doing? You just be like, I'm trying <laughs> something, I'm trying something. My next trip Take is a picture. My, my next trip is likely going to be, um, with my kids and other people's kids. <laughs> okay, okay, well, all right don't, so, don't be indecent i'll say that don't no that. no 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 it won't yeah it'll be good okay all right here we go so you gotta if you want that you gotta get two out of three right here's number one all right so I get two out of three number two and three are multiple choice number one is not all right number one is what man is most famous for a failure to achieve his ultimate goal because he got his ship stuck in ice and had his crew eat dogs to stay alive uh this was the south pole Mm -hmm. and this was or never made it to their expedition it's a failure he's he's famous for failure uh shackleton shackleton is correct i was gonna say scott yeah got to the south pole like weeks after i think Mm -hmm. it's robert scott got pole got the pole weeks after and then ended up dying on the way back right yeah that well, and he's and right. he's famous too but he's not nearly as famous he as shackleton famous. And, correct and shackleton's correct. got the epic failure but um best our, failure one of the best failures of all time oh for, for sure. sure it's like a successful failure failure keeping his men <laughs> alive so but not I the dog one sadly. of my first uh one of my first speak speeches when i was mm-hmm. like 20 of one of my first adventures i went and talked to like the chamber of commerce or something mm-hmm. in my hometown and i shared the newspaper clipping of Shackleton's uh, recruitment of the expedition. I don't know if you ever oh, read right. that, but it's awesome. It's like, hey, almost guaranteed death, yeah, it'll yeah. suck, and then like five thousand people applied. Right. Uh, is- I I was I don't know why I 
connected me. No, that would still work today. I've seen that. It's just like, it's like a deterrent, right? It's like, don't oh, yeah. come like certain death, whatever. And I think that if you put something like that out today, not in a newspaper, of course, but somewhere on the internet, you would get, you get more than 5,000 really. Oh because, yeah. 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 I mean, it was, it was genius. Um, right. I, I don't know why I was connecting it to my trip is what I'm saying. I'm like, <laughs> I think I was still really young and, and I was like, Oh, this is never heard of this before. Right. And uh, everything. So, you know, cause no matter how popular something is or a song, what I've learned with kids is like, at some point they're going to hear that for the first time. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They're going to hear music that's, everyone knew 20 years ago they're what's well, they're gonna have to hear that for the first time if they're right. gonna get used to it so even 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 for stuff like that it's it's a you know there's a first time and it's and it's and it's life-changing it's amazing to read those stories for the first time 100%. anyway yeah shackleton shackleton and you know what if you're looking for future guests maybe consider shackleton just saying okay that. yeah i hear he's <laughs> he hasn't spoken in a while he ever. hasn't so you'll get an exclusive <laughs> all right all right no, number two who was the first man to circumnavigate the world is it a ferdinand magellan b james cook c sir walter raleigh or d buford tannen oh i might get you on this one you're looking you're thinking you're thinking yeah um don't hey is shackleton dead yeah i didn't even know he was sick that's <laughs> uh, an old norm mcdonald joke um, <laughs> all right james cook you're still, you're still thinking of you're still thinking of shackleton and i'm asking the question like wait what are the answers i'm okay. gonna i'm gonna say james cook james he's, cook he's a captain and yep. uh he's also one of my good friends that's his name is james cook is it always, really okay yeah, i'm always like captain james um it's a lot of a lot of and he was a sailor and i think yep. through all his expeditions i don't know what signify i don't know what exactly qualifies for around the world you know what i mean mm -hmm. like what does that mean exactly but i i feel like he would be a, a good early candidate yeah he made it most of the way but it was actually magellan that made it all the way around the first one okay yeah. okay right. that just third adds one. tension to the third one here cool. so okay. and the t third one's always weird so um this one this is multiple choice still though okay. all right here we go number three w who was the first woman to not only reach the summit of Mount Everest, but all of the seven, seven summits as well. I got multiple choice. All right. I've got A, Junko Tabe from Japan. B, a woman named Agnes Copperspur, also known as Big Agnes. C, M.T. Lincoln. So like initials M.T. Lincoln from the U.S. Or D, Bessie Coleman. Hmm. The fact that you didn't know right away gives me gives me hope. Now, I don't want to wear the underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dang it. Um, I was really hoping you would. Just do it anyway. You know, Maybe, you never know. It might, you if might you like come it. on a backpacking trip with me, <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. That'll be okay. We'll reward. do it together. Okay. If I, uh, I'll do it with you. And, Fair uh, enough. Not in the kids one now. Um, <laughs> you I still got a chance. He gets one of four. All right. I'm going to say, I don't know why I'm like thinking almost there's a history here, or a story. Okay. I'm going to just say big Agnes out of, big I, make Ag I don't know, but big, big Agnes, Agnes, Agnes copper spurs her her full name. Yeah. She's, um, she's actually a mountain that uh, the company big Agnes is named after. So I just made up that name. Sorry. Dang it. I was thinking, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I know big Agnes. Yeah. Is there a history of like a, a, a tribute to the person? No. So it was no, wrong. no. You, yeah, I'm sorry. And honestly, um, Copper Spur is one of their uh, tent models, one of their famous models. <laughs> it's not a made up. On it. It's not like a made up name. I was like, it's too. It's, yeah. There's. I should have read that. There, it's a, it's in Mountain and Steamboat Springs is kind of where the company comes from. So yeah. I actually like their stuff. Not sure I like the names much, but I like their stuff. So it was oh, great, great equipment. Yeah, yeah. Right junko tabe from japan she was the first one like forever ago i think i want to say like 50s or 60s so Dang. there you go all right okay so after we're done here i'm gonna have you record a promo i'm gonna play it for um my buddy derek here so 
but thanks yeah. for playing along. You were close, very close. All right, last thing I got is we have our tidbit session, and when we have a guest on, I always allow them to um, you know share anything that hasn't come out about your podcast. I feel like I feel like we've been promoting your podcast the whole show because you've been we've been reflecting about kind of you know who we've had on our shows, and you've you've kind of referenced some episodes and stuff. But for, in case people have missed it. What's your podcast and is there anything we have that's coming out we have to look forward to or anything else you want to share that um, we should be aware of? Yeah, Carl, thanks for the opportunity. I feel like there is more than probably even the show. Um, if you haven't, you know, been actively listening, the show is called <laughs> Adventure Sports Podcast. Right. Don't search Adventure Stories Podcast, which is what I kind of call it. But Adventure Sports Podcast, uh, what's coming up? Yeah, we have a lot of great guests uh, that I've recorded recently. I don't, frankly, if I can be honest, don't have a, like an overarching plan with the show. I just talk to the the next really cool person and keep the yeah. show going. And uh, we're Love almost it. at a thousand episodes. We'll be at a thousand episodes early next year. Okay, okay. And what are you gonna do for episode a thousand? I don't even know yet. I'm I'm thinking about that. It, okay. it, it can either be like this whole thing, or it's just gonna not be anything special. That that's mm. the two options there. Okay. So it's uh, gotta I, be a thing, man. It's gotta be a thing. One Come of my on. favorite podcasts, which I just enjoy listening to, is stuff you should know. I've been, oh yeah, that, that was the first show I ever. That was the first podcast I ever listened to. And I'm yeah, like, one of my first too. And I listened to like an episode about vultures, and I'm like, what is this? I was like telling my friend, I'm like, this is dumb. These two guys are just basically goofing off for an hour, right? And it just grew on me, and, yeah. and, and the whole—that's what got me into podcasting. And I'm still like, I'll go through spells where I don't listen for like a year, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm into it again. And yeah. anyway, they their thousandth show, which was years ago now, uh, they didn't do anything. They were like, hey, happy thousand, yeah, that's crazy. Oh. Anyway. And uh, no, have those guys on your show and invite oh, them on. <laughs> no, there's no way. They're so big. That's like the fifth largest podcast out. There, I'll invite them for you. How about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're better <laughs> probably at inviting than me. I just kind of let people come to me. Okay. Um, so, yeah, a thousandth episodes coming up. It's it's great. There's a lot of history and a lot of all the most of the episodes are evergreen. Uh, lots of great stories. And uh, what else? Um, something I'm really passionate about now. Um, I actually work for a brewery. Like I said, I work mm -hmm. for a non-alcoholic craft brewery, great stuff, athletic brewing. They donate a lot of money to trail restoration and, uh, conservation grants. We donate 2% of all our sales to that. And that's like 2 million bucks a year. Oh, that we wow. get to, it, if you use the outdoors at all, you're, you recreate outside, which I'm sure you do. If you listen mm -hmm. to this podcast, there's a very good chance we've put money into your community or very near to your community mm. uh through just the amount of of grants we've we've done uh distributed and we like to focus on communities where it makes a really big difference so mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the biggest project at the biggest national park it's like hey we need to redo this parking lot or redo this trailhead or redo this whatever it is clean up this trail in this community uh that's a little more tight knit smaller smaller organizations so um we've we, it's been a really cool part of what we do that's very cool and then personally i'd say that kind of leads into you know i've been doing adventures for years uh not nearly as long as tons of our guests probably even as long as you and uh but one thing i really care about now is you know why do the places we recreate on these protected lands how do they get to that point who does that mm. how do, how are they not you know how does that come to be? Mm -hmm. And through that interest and curiosity, I've really a lot of my work and my free time, which there isn't much of anymore, right. uh, goes towards protecting more and more land for uh, not only recreation, but environmental purposes, wildlife, uh, all the benefits that come along with keeping nature, nature. And so that's, that's the work I do a lot now is protecting, um, helping in efforts to protect local local areas around me here in florida which there are you know people that's another big topic we talk about a lot people you don't have to have adventure in the in in you know the grand canyon or the himalayas or the rockies or whatever it is adventure you can tap into that kind of 
wavelength of adventure anywhere you are. If there is a tree in your front yard, you can <laughs> you can be a part of adventure and a part of nature. Right. It doesn't have to be huge, and it, and it not like a like an off brand version. Like that is Mother Nature right there. Right, that's the same Mother Nature acting on that tree or that small hiking area in your town as it is as it's the same mother nature that's you know in the thickest jungles of the amazon or wherever so mm. i try to remind people of that and living somewhere now because i used i start with you know, the show started in colorado and that's where i took it over mm -hmm. when i brought the show back to florida um i've been blown away uh by just how adventurous this place is and how adventurous anywhere is frankly one of the best hikes i went on this year was in new jersey mm. and a place i never thought i'd had no expectation for right. and it blew my mind and i'm like how, how much am i underselling other places how much sure. am I? and so i, I encourage anybody uh, because i was just talking about this with some friends they were like i feel like i have to be in those big mountains to to feel connected to nature and i'm like no 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 like that that is a great place to do it but you can do it it's a practice and it takes a little it's a more subtlety in a lot of places but you can learn to tap in to that same stream anywhere you are right so i want to leave folks with that that's great yeah and thanks for all you do for the outside and the grants that you just mentioned we appreciate all of that and thanks for putting on excellent content that inspires us to get outside and try new things i've got we'll have links in the show description but yeah just really appreciate your show and all you do for that and just appreciate your time for coming on the show mason just yeah thanks so much yeah wow this is uh this has been a treat thank you carl yeah. and yeah. thanks for going over a little bit i know we're <laughs> over time <clears throat> my no no my pleasure my honor and um uh, Thanks, everybody, for joining us for the show. This is uh, one of our last guest host episodes. Before we kick off the next season, we thought we'd end with um, with one of the best out there. Uh, so, so thanks, Mason. Wow. And, hey, everybody, have a great week. God bless. Oh,